talk about the first principle is the uh, be a diligent and respectful steward. So just like a steward on a ship uh, who takes care of everybody on board, a project manager has a responsibility that he should treat with everyone in his project team as well as in the organization with utmost respect and care and uh, be a servant leader for everybody who needs his support, facilitate them, remove the road blockers and help them with the tasks that they have at hand if there is any impediment on the way. Now, second principle is that we work in the organizations which are interconnected uh, in terms of people, systems, uh, everyone is kind of integrated into us into a big whole. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's not like projects happen in a silo. Projects happen in big organization where everyone is seems like connected. So we need to recognize that connection. We need to evaluate and respond to system interactions, which means that someone will enter in. It depend on us and we will depend on someone else too. So it, it, it tells us that we are part of a big system where we have some give and takes, some dependencies on each other. Then we need to be careful about that all the, pro of the projects that we do, uh, there, there will be a different level of complexity uh, and we need to untangle that complexity. We need to find um, a way like just like a just like um, we need to navigate through the complexity and and find um, where is the path where shall uh, so so the simple solutions will not be simple the end goal uh, cannot be reached uh, very easily it will be always challenging so we need to find steer towards uh, uh, the end goal keeping in mind that what are the best ways to reach to the end goal and then we need to navigate that complexity so complexity in the sense that whenever we start a project there is so much uncertainty around it so if we discuss we brainstorm we uncover many details and this means that it will not be that complex when we started it so more discussions more brainstorming more mind maps and the uh, complexity will be reducing now Fourth one is that we need to create a collaborative project team environment, which means that it's the responsibility of a PM to ensure that the team working under him finds themselves in a collaborative environment. Anyone can approach each other. There should not be uh, too much of bureaucracy or uh, strict rules around it. You should There should be free, free flow of information, transparency, and people should should support each other and give that give, give each other helping hand now then fifth principle is demonstrate leadership behavior which means that uh, as a pm we need to demonstrate various situational leadership styles uh, when and where needed so in the start of the project we may need to be a uh, guiding force behind everything we need to understand the project ourselves first and then explain to everybody so we need to develop consensus around the project objectives goals so there is too much of direction that we need to give so we might be a directive leader but as we move along we will involve people in planning so we will be inclusive leader that involves everybody in planning and we will take people input while we uh, commit for estimates resource timelines anything we cannot being pm does not mean that we take uh, dictatorship uh, role so we might not be uh, it, it might not be practical to go by the dictatorship mean we have to be democratic so we need to demonstrate these leadership behaviors in situations that will be demanding uh, demanded by the project uh, every day there will be different situation with, from which we will be in uh, uh, challenged with so we shall uh, adopt a situational leadership style depending on the situation we need to choose the leadership style um, and this gives pm a lot of opportunity to practice various leadership styles then we come to the risk responses so um, just like uh, uh, uncertainty uh, and complexity that we already discussed so we have to manage that so uh, for the risks that we can see that there might be a situation 
or event in future that can derail our progress or that can hit our objectives like we may um, got get hit in our schedule or we may get delayed by a certain number of days or certain event happens and then the cost uh, rises for the material or equipment or resources and then we get hit on the cost objective or maybe there are some defects found because of which we may have some rework to be done. So all those events that can derail our progress, we need to identify those events and then do proper risk assessment and risk mitigation. Once we prepare our risk responses, we need to revisit our risk responses as well that are these enough to safeguard our future? Are these mitigations uh, reducing the probability and risk, uh, probability and impact of the future risks or not? So our mitigations um, has to be revisited. So we should optimize our mitigations um, and our risk responses, whatever risk responses, either it is mitigation or avoidance, whatever we put in place, we should revisit that. Is it enough? Is it working? Is it safeguarding our future or not? Then we need to create the engagement uh, between the stakeholders. So it's important that we, we identify the stakeholders, we categorize them, who are the key stakeholders, and then uh, depending on the engagement uh, style, like for, for each person, there is a different communication style. So we need to adopt our communication style with different age groups, different generations, different level of stakeholders, higher management, team members, and then we need to keep our engagement intact so that everyone is aware that there's a project happening and he has some uh, some... Um, he is aware about the project risks, issues. So all the related stakeholders must be aware about the project progress and we should also uh, keep them involved, keep them engaged so that we can buy in some support that is needed from them. Then we need to uh, tailor based on the context. So, so uh, one size does not fit all. Um, similarly, we uh, have different situations in project management, so we need to tailor our, tailor our approach accordingly. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, if there are uh, 50 or 49 processes uh, that PMI tells us that apply in your projects, it doesn't mean that all these processes will be applied in all the projects that we do. Maybe certain projects may require us to utilize eight to 10 processes and uh, because of the size of the project, because the project is very small. So we may not uh, be ut utilizing all the processes that are given to us. Uh, but keep in mind, we can always tailor processes, but we cannot tailor principles. Principles are applied as in every project, smaller or bigger. We have to apply all the principles uh, uniform, uh, un, uh, unanimously, like uniformly. We we cannot tailor a principle that let me apply a principle uh, which is uh, in this project and I will not apply the other principle in this project. No. Principles, there is no tailoring. But processes, standards, tools, templates depend on the situation which project demands uh, level, what level of detail is required for each project. We may apply different processes and we may not apply. Just as an example, in certain projects, we may do a deep uh, quantitative risk analysis, uh, but maybe certain projects require us to do some qualitative risk analysis, and that should be enough for us. So we need to tailor based on the context. Then we have to embrace adaptability and resilience. Yeah, because uh, projects are complex, projects demand strong character. Being a leader, we should not be easily uh, fatigued or we should not be the people who um, give up so early. So we should be the people, uh, we should have a character that has some resilience. We should keep faith in ourselves, in our team's ability and trust the process and keep, um, keep the morale of the team high, keep them motivated. And uh, when there is a will, there is a way. So we need to impart this a sense of uh, sense of commitment and resiliency uh, but we should be adaptable as well in our approach so so there is no room for rigid rigidness uh, in uh, in project management we have to be flexible enough to 
to change our approach to change our plan to revisit our plans um and 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 change our alternatives look 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 for various alternatives maybe there is a simple way of doing various things so we should consult we should go for alternatives if it saves our time it saves our cost it saves our uh, it, it improves our quality so we should be open to feedback and should be open to number of ways of doing things then we have to focus on value whatever decisions we should we take we should always keep in mind uh, customer value what is in it for a customer uh, how we can generate um, let's say if we are spending one dollar of a customer how we can generate at least a dollar or more for the customer so we need to always focus uh, that how we can deliver more and more value uh, to the customer uh, back to the customer so if we are introducing new features in the product those features should be more valuable so that client once the product rolls out the client has more return on investment on the product so each each decision should bring value in the uh, in the for the customer so build, build quality into the process and deliverables yeah this is important because the previous um, uh, conservative style of quality was that quality was always inspected in um, and then in the process we used to have an inspection in the end and then we inspect that how many items are actually found uh, in uh, found defective and then we will rework on those items but but what the principle is telling us that we need to uh, we need to build the quality in our processes and in our deliverables rather than inspecting the quality towards the end. So it's while uh, you are making or baking cake, uh, you need to ensure that right amount of sugar is added. You need to ensure that uh, right um, uh, level of temperature is set, and you need to ensure that during the process that those um, things are standards are taken care of so that the end result has utmost quality the deliverable has utmost quality built in it's not inspected in but it's built in so you ensure that you 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 set your standards high and then you implement those standards and then there are the there are uh, then you won't be able to you you will have better quality in the end because you 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 build the quality in the process and you build the quality in the deliverables rather than you spend time on inspection visits and more sampling. Uh, you just ensure that you choose the right standard and implement it. And uh, then we have uh, the last but not the least twelfth one is the enable change. So all the projects are uh, we we learned that projects are catalysts for change. So we will bring uh, the organization from one state to another state as the result of this project. Maybe we'll sell more product. Uh, I mean, we'll sell a new product and it will bring a new revenue. We will uh, improve our existing processes and we'll serve our customers in a faster way, efficient way. So we need to enable change to envision, I mean, to achieve the envisioned future. So th that's also one of the responsibility or uh, we need to keep it uh, close to our heart that what did we deliver as, as the outcome for this organization? through this project, did we deliver any change? Are we making less mistakes uh, with the by bringing in new system, which is as the result of this project? Uh, are we serving our customers faster, more efficiently? So we need to deliver that change. We need to enable that change so that the organization can achieve the envisioned future state. So 